Okay, so now let's talk about the second half of the lecture. I want to give you a set of examples that talks about this m h of n. Uh, we will talk about finite 2D sets, we will talk about positive rays, intervals, and convex sets. Okay, so let's start with the example. The first example would be the set of H being on the linear models in two-dimensional space. And then the number of data points would be three. Now, why do I want to specify these two quantities? It's because my MH of N is a function depending on H and also N. Uh, and therefore, I need to tell you that my, my, my hypothesis set. I also want to tell you that uh, the number of training samples. I ask what is the number of dichotomies that I can generate by moving these three data points. Okay, so this can give you H. Okay, as we have seen in in the in in, in the uh, in, in the examples before. Okay, because if you locate the three uh, data points, okay, in a triangle, then you will get a dichotomy, or you can get eight dichotomies, and that would be uh, 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 m h of n that equals to eight. Okay, is it the best? Uh, that is indeed the best because for three data points. The maximum number of strings that you can ever construct, uh, would be eight. Okay? So you can have minus, minus one, uh, all the way to plus, plus, plus one. Uh, and that, that would be, they're all together just eight possible choices. Okay? Now, no matter how you locate your blue circles, now you can move your B to here, you can move your A and to a little bit upper, uh, you can move your, your, your C a little bit lower. That is not going to change the, 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 the labels that you're giving to this case. Okay, and therefore, in, in, in this situation, when you have a linear model in 2D, and when you have three data points, then the number of dichotomies will be eight, and that is indeed the best you can ever get. And therefore, we conclude that the mh of n, uh, mh of three, that is eight. Okay, so now let's continue our example. What happens if your, 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 your model, your hypothesis set is still a 2D linear model, but now the number of training samples is, is also three. Okay. And so, uh, and so, and so now you say that, okay, what if I go to the second example? Uh, uh, uh is it, is it, uh, the, the, the worst case, okay? So this is the situation we saw before, where you have uh, six uh, cases that are allowed, and then two cases that are not allowed. And so if you have, if you choose a configuration like this, you have six dichotomies. Is it the best? No, because the previous one is still the three samples, and then it is still a linear model, that can give you eight, and therefore the previous one is the best. How about the situation where we go to, uh, still a 2D space. However, uh, we have, uh, n equals to four, four data points. Now, we can enumerate all the possible cases as follows. Okay. This is actually the best you can ever construct by locating the four, the four, um, the data points. Now, uh, what would be, uh, and the, the other example, uh, and you can imagine that you put the all, uh, the, the four data points on the line. We will talk about that later. Okay. But let's look at this example. I put the four data points just at the four corners of a square. So in this case, we ask, what is mh of four? Okay. So now you can see that, uh, uh, these are all the possible cases. I can, I can list them out. Uh, these are the examples where I can draw a line. Okay, for example, in this case, I can draw a line that can classify the red dot and then the gray dots. I can just draw a line here and then I can just cut it. Okay, now in the second case, I can also draw a, a, a line. The third one, I can draw a line. The fourth one, I can draw a line. Okay, by drawing a one line because I'm in a linear model, I can just draw a line and then make the lower half is gray, the upper half is red, or vice versa. If you look at the second row here, that's also possible by drawing a line, because the, long, the line can be here, and then the line can be uh, vertical. Uh, this line is also vertical, this line is horizontal. That is also allowed. Now, uh, 
the third row, all these four examples, that is also okay. Uh, why? Well, because you can, you can draw the, the line as follows. Uh, you can, you can cut it over, uh, the, the red and also the gray. That's allowed. Now, what will not be allowed would be that you have two gray points sitting here and then the two red points sitting there. Uh, if that happens, then with only one straight line, you will not be able to classify them into, into the way that you configure. Two red here and two gray over there. Okay. Uh, now you can, of course, rotate by 90 degrees. You have another case. And therefore, among all these 16 cases, uh, only 14 of these cases are allowed by the, by the number of dichotomies. Okay. So the dichotomies in this set of dichotomies, you have 14 cases that are allowed. And then, and then, then there are, there are, um, two cases that are absolutely not allowed. Now you can say, can I do better than these 14? You can try to move uh, these uh, data points around. For example, you can move the four data points sitting on one straight line. Now, that will actually be even worse because you can show that, um, you can show that if you draw a straight line, you can only cut through a certain number of cases because if, you, if all, the, all, the, all the data points there are on a line, then you can have red, gray, red, gray, then you have, you have oscillating cases, then with only one straight line, you cannot classify them. Uh, another possibility is that you have one data point here, and then three data points sitting in a line. That is not, not that is also not, uh, not a good choice because then you need to, uh, you need to consider the, the cases where you have the three sitting in a line. That cannot be, uh, uh, maximizing the number of dichotomies. In fact, when you, when you try to put the four data points at these four corners, this is already maximizing the number of dichotomies. That's the best you can get. And therefore, what is MH of four when H is a, a, a linear model in 2D? Then the answer is 14. 14 is the best you can ever get for this model with this many data points. Let's look at more examples. This is an example of, uh, of a positive ray. Okay, so uh, in this example, you have you are you're considering uh, a hypothesis that is a, a, a positive number uh, as long as you have uh, you, you set a, you set a cutoff point, and then any point that is on the right hand side that is called a plus one, anything that's on the left hand side is called a minus one. Okay, so now there will be n data points. You ask what is the uh, the, the, the growth function, or what is the num maximum number of dichotomies you can ever get from this example. So the set would be the set of H that can turn the real number into plus one and minus one. And then the hypothesis that you're choosing would be just the sign of uh, X minus A, where A would be a real number. So you can, you can set A as the cutoff interval. If your, uh, if your X is bigger than A, then you will give a plus one. Other than that, you will give a minus one. So you cut a line into two halves, and you can only move the, along the line. You cannot move up and down. You can move uh, on the left and right. Then what is the, uh, the number of dichotomies? Well, the number of dichotomies will be, will be n plus one because you have n data points and therefore you have n plus one, uh, intervals to cut. Okay. So the n come, the n comes from the n points and then the plus one comes from the two n's. Okay. So you have, uh, you have the red over here. So in this case, I, I have nine data points. Okay. So five of them are red crosses, four of them are blue circles. I can put it, I can cut it here. Then, then I only have, uh, uh this case being a uh, minus one and the rest being a uh, plus one. Or I can put it at, right in the middle at, 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 at here. Then I have five. Uh, minus one and then four plus one. Or I can put it over here, then everyone becomes uh, minus one. Okay, so you can count the number of possible cuttings. And remember, uh, if you cut, if you cut between here and then there, uh, as long as it's between these two numbers, you are not going to make a difference. Okay, you are not going to make a difference because here we have a finite number of samples. You only have a finite number of n samples. And between any two samples, uh, you can, you can cut it here, you can cut it there. It will not change the dichotomy. 
Therefore, at ultimately, what, what is the number of dichotomies we have? We will only have uh, n plus 1 dichotomies. And therefore, mh of n will be m plus 1. Now, let's look at one more example. And uh, this example says that instead of looking at the positive ray, let's look at the interval. In this interval, as long as you're inside this interval, it will be plus 1. Outside the interval, it will be minus 1. So the hypothesis set is still a function that will map the R2 minus 1 and plus 1, and then uh, you put an interval. And so the length of the interval is, will be n points, okay? So then you can count uh, the number of dichotomies. It will be the, uh, the, the number of, of dichotomies that we have from the previous case, and you, you need to chop it into half, and therefore you have this n choose 2 uh, factorial uh, situation plus 1, okay? So in this equation, you can see that I have n plus 1, that would be the number of intervals I can cut, and then I want to put it in, cut it into two halves, and therefore I have n plus 1 choose 2, uh, plus 1, that would be the number of, because I want to take care of the two n points, and that will give me this number. And then you factor this out, you have n squared divided by 2 plus n divided by 2 plus 1. That will be the number of dichotomies you can get for this example. So you can think of, well, how do we get to this equation? Well, you can think of, you have n plus 1 balls, and then you want to pick 2. Okay, how do you think about that? Well, think about you have, you have a lot of intervals. Okay, you have n plus 1 intervals. You want to pick two out of them, one being the beginning, one being the ending interval, okay, ending point, a starting point and end point. So you, you have n balls, you pick two of the, those out, and then what is the number of combinations? That would be n plus one choose two, and then the plus one will count for the end points, right? So, so that will give you the, 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 the equation. Okay, so let's look at more examples. Suppose your set now becomes a, uh, a set of h becomes r2 mapping to plus 1 and uh, minus 1, and then your h, uh, your h will give you plus 1 when, uh, 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 when the set is convex, okay? And here are some examples. So you, so, so you're only considering the set being convex, okay? so all the, all the h, they are convex sets. These are not convex sets, and you have an ellipse, you have a, a pentagon, you have, you have different shapes. As long as uh, the, the set are convex, you will give a plus one. Okay? So, uh, so how, how about this collection data points? Uh, so can you find a H uh, such that uh, you, you get a convex set? And yes, uh, do the convex whole. Okay, so uh, does it give you the maximum number of dichotomies? Uh, the answer is no, because the interior points do not contribute. So, so let's look at this diagram. We ask, what if we want to, uh, 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 find the, uh, find the data set that is a convex set that uh, includes all the data points? Uh, is it a case? Well, here is an example. Okay. So you can see that everything that is inside. So if I give you data points, okay, I give you a data point that located in this way. I ask, uh, can you draw me a convex set that can cover these data points? Uh, then, uh, if the data points are located on a circle, I can draw this particular convex set, and I call that as plus one. Anything outside, I call it as minus one. Okay. Now, you can move around this convex set, okay, and then, and then you can ask, what is the number of convex sets that I can ever have for the circle? You can show that there is actually, uh, 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 this is the best you can ever do, okay? And so you can put a circle, and you can, you can get as many as 2 to the power n different dichotomies. Okay? So, the number of dichotomies is 2 to the power n, therefore the growth function, this number is 2 to the power n. Uh, this is the best you can ever get with the n points, and you cannot, you cannot go beyond this 2 to the power n. So the summary of the example is the following. If you're positive ray, you have n plus 1. If you have a uh, positive interval, you have this number. And then if you have a convex set, you have 2 to the power n. And so what if we replace m by this mh of n? Uh, and, and, if, uh, m, and if this mh of n is a polynomial, 
then we can hopefully do the following thing. We can replace the n by the mh of n, and that is a finite number, and we can put this into our uh, equation, and that n should be much smaller uh, than the exponential decay function in the halving inequality. If that happens, then hopefully as n goes to infinity, then the, uh, then the, then the influence of this uh, growth function will not be as significant as the growth of the training samples. And so uh, that's our hope. And what we do want to do next time is to put this idea of growth function into our Hafting inequality. And then we want to show that uh, the Hafting inequality can actually be well controlled uh, in, in many situations. And then we want to look at the VC dimension. And, why we will try, and, we, we, and then we will want to look at the generalization bound again. Uh, and here is the uh, reading material for today's lecture. Uh, I would highly encourage you to take a look at the first two references. Uh, they contain a lot more details than what I'm describing today. And try to look at examples, especially the growth, the growth function and also the examples of how to calculate the growth functions. Thank you.